Okay, today I'm going to show you another trick that you can do with your little air die grinder, your little pencil die grinder. Your cheap $30 unit. You can use it to sharpen your end mills. Now, I mean, this isn't a technically correct process, but if you've got a mill and you've got a whole lot of high speed uh, steel end mills that you've got no way of sharpening because you need a special jig really to do it properly, or you send them away, well, you can do it yourself. Um, and it'll work quite okay. Now, the way you do it, quite simple really. You mount your little air die grinder in your tool post, but instead of having with a friction disc in it or a cutting disc, the bigger diameter the better. But instead of having the, the die grinder on the center line of the lathe, you lift it up above center about two millimeters. Now by doing that, we're going to use the curvature of the cutting disc to actually put some back relief on the the horizontal flutes while we're grinding them. Now we've only be grinding the one nearest the operator so you'd be, basically you'll be grinding from the outer edge to the centre and then come back turn it around a quarter of a turn and do the next one. Now it's all quite simple really. The first thing you have to do is make sure that you set up, get a square and set up the the vertical cutters so that they are on the dead vertical. So there's two cutting edges on the vertical on those flutes. This is on a four flute um, cutter. So you just modify the action for whatever flutes you've got. But basically on a four flute you do it this way. So you line it up 90 degrees there to the, uh, the bed, which it is. Now being 90 degrees that way means that it's going to be perfectly horizontal this way. Okay, you've got this above centre, the little disc. You now have to set your compound mount at 2 degrees, well, off, off 90, so that you can actually, you're actually grinding into the centre slightly. You've got to have a, a, a slight V in the end of any of the end mill. If you look at any end mill, uh, high speed steel end mill, you'll see they're not dead flat. They have a bit of a uh, taper inwards to give them some clearance and to make them bite and self-centre better when you're plunging and uh, you'll have to do the same. You can't just grind across, you know, spin it around and grind across and sharpen that way because it's just not going to work. It has to have a taper in and you have to have the relief. Okay, so you set it two degrees. Now you wind in your cross slide. You go to the outside edge of the cutter and you bring up the disc as close as you can to the very outside edge of the of the cutter. You then start. I'll do this. I'll, I'll, I'll do this without actually demonstrating it because there'll be so much noise you won't hear what I'm saying. So basically, we won't actually do this, but I'll just show you the steps. So you bring this up. You turn on your die grinder so she's spinning around, and you bring it in so it just contacts the very outside edge of the of the flute you lock down your carriage. Okay, so she's all set to go. Now, it's quite simple, you then just feed in the cutting disc with your uh, with your compound slide. In she goes, you take it in and do it very gradually and it will go into the centre. Once you've got all the way into the centre, you bring it back. You just do the one pass, you don't do any more than that. You bring it back, you turn off your air, you then turn your cutter around, set it up 90 degrees again, wind in your compound again to the centre with the air on, so you're cutting the next flute. When you get to the centre, bring it back again, and you basically do that for the four cutting flutes. So that basically you just keep turning it, resetting it, turn on your air, feed it in, feed it back. And once you've done that, have a look and each of those cutting flutes should be ground um, to some degree. Now, depending on how badly worn and chipped the cutter is, you might get away with just one pass, it may be all it needs, but 
if it's badly worn or badly chipped you might have to do two or three passes repeat the process until you get it right now as I said this isn't technically correct um, but you still have your original back relief there's two relieves there's one straight behind the cutting edge and there's another much heavier relief behind that if you have to grind so much off that, that that's worn away as well you can still uh, recut it using a similar process um, with a little die grinder for that as well so yes this will sharpen them no problems and they'll come up as good as brand new I mean um, as I said it's not technically correct but uh, it does work and you will have a slight concave in the relief but as I said the bigger you can make the disc the less the concave will be because there's a limit on what these little little air uh, grinders can actually do but um, so that's how you do it it's quite simple really and it works beautifully